All right, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you guys doing? I see a uh, beach and Neppy, and look, I'm in the live chat, and so are you. What a yeah. fun time. So, Monmouth insects are cool today, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about uh, arthropods. arthropods and uh, probably some intelligent design stuff. So, uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, okay. So, um, well, my my real name is Adriana Star, but uh, I go by Insects Are Cool on YouTube. Uh, I make videos about insects and stuff. I, I'm an insect nerd. I'm even wearing a Weevil shirt right now. <laughs> weevils. Uh -huh. Yeah, Weevils. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, um, it, I can tell you what it says. It says, hear no Weevils, see no Weevils, speak no Weevil. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's something on the back of the room where it says. I've got a shirt I wear occasionally. It says, um, a water bear don't care. <laughs> it's got a little tardigrade on it. It kind of looks like he's flipping people off, but I'm not, I just tell them <laughs> always pointing. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, that's, that's one of my only like animal shirts. But uh, so, uh, how did you get into uh, your love of arthropods and oh. insects and things? Oh, uh, that's a funny. That's a funny story. Uh, I originally went to college as a uh, computer, computer science major, and then uh, I took one computer science, sorry, one computer science class. Uh, it was over Java, and that class literally, literally made me cry because of how stressful it was. Oh. So yeah, I hated it. So uh, I. Uh, so then I decided to find another major. I was trying to look for another major I wanted to, to do. My sister also happened to be in college too. Uh, she was an English major, and uh, some people were being really negative her, negative to her, like saying that she wasn't going to get a job or anything and stuff like that. She's not mm -hmm. going to get paid well and so on. Uh, and so. And then she, I think she started thinking about getting another major too. So uh, she took this class called Insects and Society. Yeah, I think for a little bit she was thinking about being an entomologist too. Uh, but then as a while she changed her mind and she went, she went back to English and then I replaced her. <laughs> hmm. So what do you do now? What, what do I do now? Yeah. Uh, not even much right now. <laughs> Hey, I feel the the same. It's the summer, so no college at the moment. Yeah. Just work uh, and trying to put out videos. But yeah. hey, look, I'm on right now. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Um, oh, got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, did you ever watch Ants and It's Bugs Life? Uh, okay, so for okay, first of all, uh, I actually made already made a video about this. I made a video about It's a Bugs Life. I, I already made a video about Bugs Life on my channel. I made a review of it actually. And about ants, uh, I was thinking about making a, another video. Uh, probably I might put it out like next week. Uh, I'm gonna make a comparison between ants and Bugs Life. I, I've already hmm. read, I, I've already watched both of them, so. I think I saw a video just the other day that was, uh, was it ants came out right after Bugs Life? Uh. Or is it the other way around? Actually, they they came out to the same year. I don't know. Which exactly which one came first but they came out in the same year like 1998 i think let me look hmm. but, yeah uh, <laughs> but yeah it's a it's an interesting movie I've, i haven't seen it in a long time did that have didn't ants have sylvester stallone in it uh yeah i think i think i think it was the wasp in that oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah they were both made in 1998 so okay yeah I haven't seen a Bugs Life in a long time. That was an interesting movie. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, all the the bugs are friends. All the insects are friends with each other. Nobody ever fights or anything. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Uh, and in a Bugs Life, uh, it's funny because uh, there's a ladybug in, in the movie, you know? And then there's mm -hmm. also an aphid that, you know, it was a pet. It's like a pet to the ants. Mm -hmm. uh, but f funny in real life is that, you, you know, ants and aphids, like, they have this kind of relationship together. They help each other, but then ladybugs like to—they—they they, they like to eat aphids. So it's funny how the ladybug did like try to go after the aphid or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. They uh, the ants coax the the aphids into producing like uh, like 
mm. or nectar or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's it. That is interesting. Uh, <laughs> I think the Dawkins wrote a little bit about that in the Selfish Gene, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Interesting book. Is <laughs> yeah, very interesting book. Um, but so you've taken some courses on on like insects in in yeah. uh, college. Uh, mm-hmm. My zoology teacher was was an entomologist, and so cool. did you guys ever do the the trick where, like, if you take a pen and you draw like a little circle on a sheet of paper and take <laughs> yeah. some termites? Yeah, we we did that before. It, yeah, I remember doing that. I was volunteering at uh, Insect Zoo Venture at my college, and uh, we we did that there. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, I never would have guessed because <laughs> uh, yeah. they'll follow the the little circle because the the ink. What is it mimics like their follow me sig- uh, chemical signal or whatever? Uh, yeah. So, do you have any uh, any insects that are your favorites that you uh, just like in particular? Okay. Well, my favorite insect is the. Are we doing the Bob and Gabriel? Okay, we can talk about that later. Okay, but anyway, okay. So, my favorite insect is the Morpho aga. Well, Morpho butterflies in general, actually. And that's my profile picture right there. That's the Morpho butterfly. That's mm-hmm. my favorite insect. Cool. Uh, you're, you seem you seem uh, also very good at insect identification because I've given I've given you uh, two in the past few weeks. Yeah, you gave me two. Uh, the the first one was actually pretty easy. The water bug. Uh, this the other one the other one was actually harder harder. I was looking at the comments and everyone was saying like it's Ibiaptera, it's Plecoptera, and everyone was saying different things. Don't supply. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was a. I think that it looked kind of like a stone fly from what I'd seen on a picture. Yeah. But again, I have no idea. It was just. <laughs> Wait, you know that one is. Yeah, <laughs> uh, what's funny is uh, I've seen a bunch of uh, strange animals uh, over at Savannah's house because she's out in kind of, kind of the country area, mm-hmm. and like one day we were driving over there and I saw a a, a scissor-tailed swallow and I was like, "What is this?" Because. Uh, I've never seen this bird. They have these long feathers on their tail. And I was like, what the heck is that? Take a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, lots of uh, bizarre insects out there. Uh, we did. Uh, oh, this was it. We got a question. Uh, about the. You want to talk about the bombardier beetle? Yeah, we can talk about the bombardier beetle a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, uh, actually, this is my first video, actually, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, a video about the Bombardier Beetle, too. Uh, I, don't know, I don't think I explained it well enough, though. But, okay, so, anyway. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what the chemical names are. Hydroquinone, hydrogen peroxide, and there was a third one, I think. Do, do you remember what the third one is? No, I remember those two, but, yeah, the I don't remember what the third one is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember just... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna have to look this up again. Okay, okay, so basically, uh, and, and there's actually a video about this actually by uh, Dawkins, or sorry, not, yeah, Richard Dawkins. Uh, he, okay, so it started with uh, some person made, what's his name? Sorry, it's not arguing everywhere. <laughs> okay, so it's based, it's based off a of mistranslation of this, of like this book. Uh, Basically, you take they think they you take these two chemicals from Bombardier Beetle, you mix them together, and it's supposed to make this like explosion. Mm-hmm. But it's based on a mistranslation; they don't explode. Uh, you can look at uh, Richard Dawkins video about it. Uh, in, in this video, he actually put, mixes the, those two chemicals together, and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay, th- did I explain that well enough? Yeah. Uh, I just can't remember the chemical's name. Yeah, hydrogen peroxide and uh, yeah, hydroquinone. That was the mm-hmm. well, that, that's what she said. Nestle, like she mentioned that yeah. one. But yeah, it was the uh, they um. And what's what's interesting is, of course, both of those occur naturally in a lot of a lot of animals. Yeah. Uh, and so all you really need is a is two little chambers, two little organs uh, to hold them and then to mix them, and mm-hmm. you know that's really it. And so uh, it's not even until it's like it's not until you add the third one that they actually become and they don't even explode they just become yeah. like noxious whatever and so uh have you seen some of the the creationist arguments for that like uh, Dwayne gish oh yeah that's what i was thinking of 
Yeah, he, uh, you know, he actually tried to use that to argue that the dinosaur Parasaurolophus could breathe fire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, um, he's the Barbadier relative? Yes, yeah. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, um, because, you know, dragons have to, uh, dragons must have been uh, mm -hmm. dinosaurs. And so the, uh, the Parasaurolophus could breathe fire. Uh, and whenever, you know, he was like, well, yeah, it would breathe fire, and we can explain this, because look at the Bombardier Beetle. It's like, wait, wait a minute, what? <laughs> it didn't make any sense at all. Uh, we have another question. Okay. Uh, uh, um, from BJ. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, that's the third one. No, I, I said hydrogen peroxide and, and hydroquino. I think there's still, I think there's third one I'm, I'm, I'm missing. I can't remember the name. <laughs> I had a house full of crickets once, yeah. thousands of them. Do they lay eggs or uh, give live birth? I uh, think most insects lay eggs. There's very rare exceptions. So, yeah, crickets lay eggs. Okay. Uh, she wants uh, to know how she ended up with thousands of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe they give birth. I don't know. They just give birth in large numbers and mm -hmm. they were all over the place. You should get like a lizard or something, Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, uh, I actually feed crickets to my, uh, emperor scorpion, or my black forest scorpion. Oh, can we, can we look at your scorpion? No. Uh? Or, or you're not, oh, it's pretty well, obvious. over there in the, uh, I don't know. That would be interesting. I can see <laughs> if I can get him. <laughs> Yeesh. Okay, I guess we can try. Okay. Uh, Keep them busy while I <laughs> try oh, to get it. Okay. Oh, I gotta entertain them. Hello. They breed like rabbits. I think insects actually reproduce. It says probably, probably reproduce more than rabbits. We should stop saying they breed like rabbits and say they breed like crickets. They breed like fl they breed like flies. That's better. Me, I start, I start say, saying that instead. Just gonna make a question. Does she also get irritated when people call scorpions flowers as bugs or insects? Yeah, they're not bugs or insects. They're uh, arachnids. That's a different thing. I'm fine with bugs since it's really amb ambitious. Oh, oh, ambiguous. Yeah. Uh, I think generally the term bug just means uh, the order Hemitra, which includes like cicadas. No, you don't know that. You must learn the ukulele for moments yeah, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Although there is this group called Tree Bugs. Yeah, that's what No, he about. seems very angry. He's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He was trying to nab me. <laughs> I don't think he's going to do it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. No, it's all right. We tried. Uh, yep. So I've got a, a black forest scorpion. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, do you get irritated when people call scorpions and spiders bugs? Yeah. It, it bugs me. It bugs you? <laughs> uh, which group uh, is the, the true bugs? Hemetra. Yeah. Uh, what is one way you could, I guess, uh, identify of those? Uh, okay, they're usually like step sucking insects. Uh, so they'll feed on uh, they'll feed on plants usually and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still like uh, bed bugs are also a true bug. Uh, so it's mostly based on the map parts, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. I just know that cicadas, uh, cicadas are true bugs, bed bugs are true bugs, ladybugs are not true bugs. La ladybugs are a beetle, not a bug. Mm hmm. Let's see what else. I think uh, you said the other day that they have like the triangular head. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's, you can also find the triangle on beetles too, though. Mm -hmm, okay. But beetles also have like the little line down their back. Isn't that part of it? Uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. There's a group called yeah. That's what she was saying about the hemiptera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For moments, you must learn the ukulele for moments like this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I tried. Uh, he was he didn't seem very, very happy to see me. Of course, he never does. Uh, early, early bugs, ladies. Watch Bugs Life. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're they're little parasites, aren't they? Uh, ladybugs. Ladybugs, parasites. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I uh, they're beneficial. They eat ladybugs. Oh. Ladybugs, they, because mm-hmm. uh, I thought I heard that they were parasites or something. Maybe yeah, not. But uh, of like, uh, like plants, like they just raise plants. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I just know they 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 eat uh, aphids. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Aphids are kind of a pest, Wait, aren't they? Someone got confused when I said that ladybugs are bees. They said ladybugs are, are beetles or bugs. No, ladybugs are beetles. <laughs> it's just because they have bug in the name. They must be bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just like pineapples are apples, sir. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, even though pineapples are berries. Uh, but so, uh, so you do. Do you want to be be an entomologist? I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep doing YouTube. I don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, Because you'd have to get like a, or I think you would probably get like a field and organismal biology degree first and then specialize in entomology. I mean, at least that's how. Oh, yeah. In my uh, college, there's a natural entomology degree. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm just up here in uh, Shreveport. And so it's, we're smaller here. And so it's like you just have to go for, the general or kind of the general biology degree first oh, okay. and then the specialized, but, uh, no, yeah, I, I, uh, I, you get start as an entomologist. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my uh, zoology teacher is an entomologist. And so she was an interesting lady. Uh, <laughs> she knows a lot. Of- <laughs> oh, yeah. Entomologists are always interesting. Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, in the Netherlands, we call pineapples by there. They want to be accurate. <laughs> uh, there's a bit of live evolution going on here now that due to climate change, large ticks can now survive the Dutch winter and intermingle in the population. Oh. That's interesting. Cool. Did not know that. Ticks, though, are chelicerates, right? Uh, ticks are uh, arachnids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That whole uh, group with you know spiders and scorpions and mm-hmm. things uh yeah we we had a whole section like a whole because she cut it into i think it was four parts and one part was just arthropods so <laughs> and but yeah uh we got very specific with them because there are lots lots and lots and lots of arthropods you know mm-hmm. i think there was a was it the quote from a there was a quote, I can't remember who it was. It was one of the Huxleys, I think, that said, uh, uh, you, you know, there's an or that was asked, What do you think of God's creation? Oh, he that, said, That was the JBS Haldane. Oh, that God, was Haldane, okay. Yeah, God is ordinarily fond of Beatles. That's right, yeah. Because there are some, there are like, you know, over a, or hundreds of thousands of species of beetles, and then just a few thousand, a few tens of thousands of, mm. of, uh, uh, mammals, right? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, insects, they're spider food. <laughs> uh, he does. Are you familiar with his research on spiders? Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I uh, he's studying, uh, is it steatota and parasteatota? I believe. Um, is that which is and you know, these little spiders and oh. doing evo devo work with those. It's pretty oh. neat. He uh, does videos on them. Uh, she can't be. I just started. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, I was thinking of like the videos. Okay. Oh, maybe not. But anyways, uh, the other tipidarium. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna look at that later. Yeah, check it out. 
Uh, Nestle says, oh, is she aware of the study that nested horseshoe crabs within the arachnids? But then another, uh, but then recently another study in nature came out that disputed mm -hmm. it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So do you like, not know where they fit? Yeah, horseshoe crabs are, are kind of weird. They're, you know, they're definitely, um, chelicerates, but, you know, where exactly do they fit? And I guess that's kind of mm. disputed, I guess. Uh, What's interesting, really, is that uh, I was saying things that were like out of date for my uh, into, for my zoology professor, mm -hmm. uh, because she classifies like crustaceans as their own group. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you have like chelicerates and crustaceans, and then the the uh, hexapods. But it's interesting in more recent phylogenetic studies, it seems that the hexapods come out of crustacea. Mm -hmm. So crustaceans. Uh, maybe paraphyletic. It's very interesting, I thought. Uh, but regardless, uh, I'm also interested to know about your thoughts because you've been reading uh, some intelligent design stuff. Oh, a lot. A lot of intelligent design stuff. I so what? <laughs> what led you to uh, make such poor decisions in life? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I made some Christian friends. They got me into that, I guess. Hmm. I, I made okay. some Christian friends uh, about two years ago, and they got me into it. So, yeah. Uh, do you do you write anything about it? Like when you read them, do you like make, make notes? notes of, yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't have any written with me, but I, I've done that before. Okay. A little bit. Because. Uh, the, the I think the point of of the uh, Darwin's doubt is that there are some designy events mm -hmm. during the Cambrian explosion, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if what I don't think I can mention a lot a lot of things about Darwin's doubts because uh, in my classes we don't learn a lot about evolution for some reason. Like I don't know anything about uh, insect fossils very much except for that there were big dragonflies. That's like the only thing I know. Yeah, that was during the, uh, that PZ said those are horribly, horrible dreary books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Wait, he's, he's read this, right? I think. I think so. I think, PZ, if you read that one, I think you've, if you read, uh, Signature in the Cell, I think so. Yeah, like I said, I'd look at a little bit of that for, um, creation of statistics because he makes, <laughs> um, he makes a point about that's another Meyer book. Uh, how I'm reading both and more. Do it. Yeah, I was reading what PC Meyer said. I read them both and more. He did a whole presentation on that book. Yeah, I think I saw that one. I, I, I think I saw PC Meyer's presentation on it. Oh, okay. I'll have to go back and watch that one then. Yeah. Um, a signature in the cell. He talk, uh, One of the points he makes is because mm -hmm. uh, he's a he's an idea, so you know. Abiogenesis yeah. is out the window. Uh, yeah. yeah, he did. He did a chapter on the uh, uh, what's it called? R RNA world hypothesis. Yeah, he talks about. Uh, well, I was looking specifically at his protein folding uh, arguments because yeah. RJ had had signature in the cell. Oh. Uh, he makes this whole. He one of his arguments is about the unlikelihood of, yeah. of a certain protein fold, which is just nonsense because it ignores chemistry. Uh, and it's like you can't just you can't just say oh well we're gonna take you know what are, what are the odds that each amino acid is gonna form completely randomly? It's like that's not how chemistry works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was I was interested in, I was interested in the RNA world hypothesis. Um, yeah. but, but actually, I, have, I do have a question uh, about signature in a cell. Um, if you or maybe someone on the chat can answer. Uh, uh, so, you know, I took genetics and other biology courses and stuff. And uh, we heard this, we probably all know the story of like uh, Watson and Craig discover discovering DNA. Well, uh, discovering in quotes. Well, well the, the, <laughs> the, structure, the structure of DNA. Is that better? Uh, well, I, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, they kind of <laughs> stole some of their research from Rosalind Franklin. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. R Russell Franklin, yeah, we also know about Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so he makes a, like an introduction to that stuff, but 
But uh, I noticed there's something different in, in the way he tells it compared. No, I got flies in my house. <laughs> okay, Amy. Uh, so I know something you said that's different than the other biology books I read. Okay. Uh, the, I'll, I'll read you the paragraph. It's okay. Embarrassing. Okay. Uh, he's talking about Watson. Yeah, he's talking about Watson, and he's like, going to talking to Russell and Franklin, I think. And okay, so it says. When Watson showed up at King's lab, he had a tense conversation with Franklin. He lectured her. He lectured her about helical theory and why DNA must be a helix. Franklin insisted that there was no proof of that yet. Franklin rose in anger from behind her lab branch, visibly and annoyed at Watson's presumption and condescension. Watson made a hasty retreat from Franklin's office. For sorry, Franklin's lab. Later, saying he feared that she might strike him. <laughs> like, I think, so I think he's saying that Franklin actually thought it was stupid about the helix theory. That's not how I understand it. Uh, yeah, I they, never heard of that before, except in this book. Part of the problem, well, part of the reason that they got away with, um, with taking her work was she and was Franklin and Wilkins uh, describe. I remember they described the helical structure, but the the terms that they put it in were just uh insane terms that like you never see in any papers <laughs> they they talk about like the mathematics you know of the way the molecules are arranged and all this stuff mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's just insanely technically detailed uh meanwhile which is not a good way to get ideas out to the public for instance meanwhile you had watson and crick who came along and put it in much more basic terms and so it's a lot easier to understand mm -hmm. Right, and so that's mm -hmm. kind of why they got a, a lot of the credit there. Yeah, Franklin uh, yeah. was a cautious scientist who wasn't going to make uh, any declaration before the evidence came up. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The uh, it, and it's kind of interesting because it was uh, that was in what, the the fifties, wasn't it? I think in the thirties. It was only in the thirties they had established mm -hmm. that DNA was actually the molecule of inheritance through the. Uh, the was it the trans was it the transform it was transformation I think wasn't it where you yeah. take where you uptake from the environment uh, I'm not sure I think so because uh, I think transduction is the one with the with like uh, phages but regardless yeah it was which is crazy to think about it was only in the 1950s that we figured out the the structure of DNA mm. you know and it's it's crazy it was so recent. It's crazy to think about. Pauling had a spiral model too, with the base pointing outwards. It was suggested to be the key molecule in the 1890s. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember some stuff from genetics. Uh, but regardless, um, so does he? What uh, is? Is there anything in in like Darwin's doubt that you think is particularly interesting or noteworthy? Uh, see, in Darwin's doubt, uh, see, I have. Have a bookmarks. Uh, again, I'm not very good with fossils and stuff, so I'm, I'm not very good at this. Um, I did like a review of, online called from a uh, Smilodon's retreats. Mm -hmm. that one. Uh, and there was a couple things that was interesting. Uh, okay, there's one on page seven. Okay, uh, I'm gonna read. Okay, I'm gonna read a quote. Okay, the difficulty of understanding the absence of vast piles. Uh, fossil versus strata, which on my theory, on my theory, were no doubt somewhere acc accumulated before the Silurian, and it's got quotation like quotations over, i.e., Cambrian epoch is very great. He, he wrote, uh, "That's what's a quote from that's what's a quote for Darwin." Okay, uh, so Smeldon's retreats had made the comment that, uh, okay, so it's so Darwin wrote Silurian, and then, mm -hmm. but. Uh, and then uh, Stephen Meyer put quotations Cambrian, but uh, according to Smilodon's retreat, Silurian has always been different from the Cambrian. They've never been interchangeable. I think. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. The um, yeah. When back when Darwin was writing, there weren't a whole lot of periods of the Paleozoic worked out. Although there were some, mm -hmm. uh, but Silurian was one of the lowest strata, yeah. and uh, you know it's one of the oldest and. Mostly what they found at that point was just shelly things. Yeah. 
like a like Lingula was one of them. And so, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of bizarre. Um, because back then it was really kind of like you had the age of fish, mm-hmm. and then the the age of reptiles and the age of mammals, which was really interesting because that was they sort of figured this out before they were even before we had an understanding of evolutionary theory. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if it didn't have coal, it wasn't interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's pretty true. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you said you didn't. You guys uh, didn't learn a whole lot about uh, evolution in your class? But for some reason, we didn't learn, like, like fossils and stuff. I didn't learn much about that for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, the same was for me when I took uh, zoology. Um, it seemed more about the taxonomy. Yeah, rather yeah than... I learned about taxonomy. I, I, I learned about taxonomy, like physiology and stuff about insects, but I never learned about the fossils of insects. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think that's part of the tradition it seems like zoologists tend more to focus on just the living organisms yeah, and living. then then you've got the paleontologists who are just all the fossils yeah. uh and so but the thing is we we have a you know a pluralistic uh science now we have to look at both of them how they both fit into history mm-hmm. <laughs> uh oh hey you you put the link in there oh yeah not even kuka love a peck Hmm, I'm not sure what that's reference to. I don't know. I don't know what that's reference to. Uh, anyways, but yeah, yeah, it's a, it's interesting that it's pretty much all taxon. But what was really interesting, I thought, was not even that it was, it wasn't even phylogenetics. It was literally just, here's a group, here's another group, here's another group, uh, and so you know, it's like. Why? Why do we not learn about the evolution of these groups? Mm-hmm. I actually did a video on amber fossils, uh, yeah. where I talk a lot about insects and yeah. arthropods. Okay, I've actually looked at that one. I, I did watch your one about wasps evolution, though. Oh yeah, what'd you think? Uh, again, like uh, I knew about fifty percent of the stuff that was in the video because just basic entomology it's, it's stuff, but I didn't know the stuff about the fossils again. <laughs> so I thought it was interesting. I liked it. Yeah, that one was for uh, anti ordinary. Uh, okay. I've also done a video on scorpion evolution. Okay, I'll look that later. Yeah, the, uh, I should probably put those in the, I'll do it, put in the description. But yeah, uh, scorpions have an interesting history because you've got the, the earliest ones appearing in, what's it like, the Carboniferous or, or Devonian, something like that. Way, way back, you know. Uh, 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 she, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I'm just reading what PC Meyer said. She described many insect fossils, specifically about its origin of flights and insects. On the zoology, as an undergrad from a bunch of entomologists, they were pretty dark in covering paleontology. Well, hmm. well, PC, I guess you got a gooder education. <laughs> you oh, got I'm, learned I'm, good. I'm, I'm in Oklahoma, so. Well, I mean, I thought I thought my professor was good. We just didn't uh, get introduced to fossils. I like her. I think she's a good professor. We just, yeah, she just uh, didn't. We're really in, of all the college biology course I've taken, which is quite a few at this point, uh, but even more on the way, uh, fossils have gotten very much a backseat. Um, you know, uh, Bio 2 is kind of a... Bi- uh, so this is the second semester of freshman year was kind of a biodiversity. A lot of it was. Oh, go with... PC... okay, go sorry. sorry, I'm interrupting you again. Oh, no, you're fine. Okay, so PC Myers uh, posted a link uh, from a, a Kukulova pick. Apparently, in, uh, it's called Origin and Evolution of Insect Wings and the Relation to metamorph- Metamorphosis as documented by the fossil record. Okay, I'm going to have to look at that later. Well, thank you, PZ. Thank you, PC. Thank you very um, much. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the first uh, arthropods was it the first? I think the first land arthropods were like the eurypterids and millipedes. Oh, uh, the eurypterids were the the sea scorpions, mm-hmm. uh, which are, were, were not scorpions, by the way. Interestingly enough, they just look a lot like scorpions. Mm-hmm. 
and then also millipedes are early because you had the early land plants by the uh, order of vision. I should do a video on the evolution of plants at some point oh. or some plants. Oh, hey, uh, when I was in college, uh, I was actually a double major for plant biology, so. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's funny you say that because my entomology, the, the professor, the entomologist, she said she almost got <laughs> a minor in plant yeah. physiology. So yeah. <laughs> what's well, up with you guys? <laughs> plants and insects, uh, like, they, there's thing called plant insect interaction, so that's why I wanted the double major. Yeah. I I actually got rid of the double, the double the body major though because it wasn't what I was expecting. I was yeah. Like, I, was bit, I was expecting more like a uh, like plant identification stuff. I, I didn't get any of that, so I eventually dropped it. I I think I would have been happier with horticulture instead. Hmm. Yeah. I actually, I have a friend who's in uh, horticulture, but yeah, I don't know. I don't like plants a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. They've got uh, you know, instead of they don't have blood, they've got. Mm -hmm. Xylem and phloem. Yep. What's up with that? <laughs> uh, plants are okay, but there's so many. Uh, I don't know. They're weird. I like. Uh, what's I've had I had Matthew uh, Heron on who studies vulvacine algae. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that's really neat and all, but not my thing. <laughs> not my thing at all. <laughs> uh, how did insect wings evolve? So one hypothesis that argues they are. Modified gills. Hmm. Um, what I've seen is that they're outfoldings of the ectoderm. So they just became useful for, probably for gliding at first and then for flying later on. Uh, but anyways. Um, so, so you got into reading the intelligent design stuff. Do you read any creationist stuff? Uh, I read... Let's see, what's it called? Uh, the thing about geology, uh, like creation and the creation and the age of the Earth. That's what that's all was. Uh, mm. What was uh, creation and the, the age of the Earth? Is that what it's called? Is I don't there, think I've heard of that one. Uh, there was two books on it. <laughs> that's what gales are. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm gonna look up. Sorry, I'm gonna look up a book. I haven't read anything uh, creationist in a while. Oh yeah, we were talking earlier about. I guess for anyone who didn't see, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, books. This is mm -hmm. what I've been reading recently: "The uh, Origin of Philo" by James Valentine. And you were also oh. reading a Valentine book. Yep. Uh, this is by okay, "The Cambrian Explosion" by James James Valentine and Douglas Irwin. Yeah, uh, I'm of the opinion that, well, I think most people tend to agree, so that, like, these phyla stretch back, most of them stretch back before the Cambrian, but a lot of groups appear during the Cambrian, either at the start yeah. or sometime during the Cambrian. Oh, uh, I remember what the book was called now. It, it was okay. called, uh, it's by uh, some creationists, uh, there was, like, like, a whole team of it, like, there was, like, I think there's at least seven different creationists that worked on this book. This if it's a two part book, there's book, book one and book two. And it's called Radiometric Dating at the Age of the Earth. Oh, so, is it about the rate group? Yeah, yeah, it's rate group. Okay. <sighs> uh, but I, I'm really not good with physics and geology, so I can't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, it's really hard for me to understand. Yeah, their um their work has been criticized by physicists and chemists. Uh, all the rate stuff, Cambrian explosion, the construction of animal yeah. biodiversity. Uh, yeah, I put it up because someone asked. But this book, she was holding in her hand before. I think she was talking about this one. Um, but uh, but yeah, they've been criticized heavily uh, on a lot of their stuff. And actually, RJ and I will be going into a bit of it in the rocks were there. So that'll be fun. Uh, I think that's chapter two. We talk about radiometric dating. Yeah. But th that book is going to be gigantic, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter four is 78 pages. <laughs> I was looking at that just the other day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good book. Yeah. Uh, all this stuff is interesting. Uh, of course, I want to go into zoology. And so 
such a good book by its cover, but it looks like a good book. Have you ever read the Ancestor's Tale? Ancestor's Tale? Uh, no. Uh, is that like a paleontology book? Because I don't, I haven't read a lot of paleontology books. Oh uh, well, it's it does talk about paleontology. It's by Dawkins. Oh Dawkins. Uh, oh Dawkins. Okay. Yeah, it's it's the Ancestor's Tale. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Absolutely fabulous book, and he goes through, uh, like the whole of life, pretty much everything from you know, he starts at, he he actually starts at humans and goes backwards and meets each of the common ancestors mm -hmm. along the way okay. so there's but yeah you might want to check it out it's really fascinating okay you're probably should read those books instead of books like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah they won't they won't hurt you because you know? <laughs> i just want to when i was reading a uh, did man get here by evolution or by creation i just want to keep smacking it against my face <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah, arachnids tuck their dorsal uh, rami under the cuticle to form book lungs, so they weren't accepted as external structures. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Much uh, for some scientists discussing, discussing the Darwin style book on the Caprian's explosion. Yeah, I saw a lecture from, from some scientists about that too, and that was actually PC Myers. You might be thinking of PC Myers. It's like, by the way, he's he's right next to you. Yeah, he's right there. He's right there. He was, he was actually the next comment. He's right there. Yeah, and for anyone who hasn't, there's also uh, Donald Prothero in his book Evolution: What the Fossils Say and Why It Matters, uh, part two, or second edition. Um, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. PZ is so <laughs> prolific. You know, you know him even if you don't know him. There you go. Um, but yeah, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, uh, Prothero wrote just. Oh, it's Sai. Hi, Sai. Si. Hey, Prothero wrote a scathing uh, look at mm -hmm. at uh, Darwin's doubt and Stephen Myers fumbling, bumbling, Cambrian follies. <laughs> and then he reprised a lot of that. I'm somewhere. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. Then he reprised a lot of that for his book, uh, which is very good. Uh, what the fossils say, what matters. Hi, old scratch. Uh, it's uh, very all very good stuff. Um, yeah, here we are trading books on uh, on arthropods. You know, I, I haven't seen really a lot of books on on arthropod evolution in particular. Yeah, I haven't either. Every time I go to the you know, Barnes and Noble, uh, it just seems like so many books on the evolution of humans. It's like humans are boring. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, monkeys. <laughs> A bunch of monkeys. <laughs> uh, yeah, they uh, are books on um, what? What is it? Uh, like the human bacterial uh or microbial interactions. There are a lot of books on that coming out, it seems. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place. Again, eh, not really hugely interesting. I mean, in some sense, it's interesting to think about because we have a gut flora, and all of our ancestors had a gut flora. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, insects have gut floras. Uh, so that's interesting to think about. Um, and, you know, that's something that no one ever... It's like, you know, you don't ever think about, oh, what are, what are these bacteria, what are these protozoans been doing for the past, uh, you know, half a billion years since the, the Cambrian explosion? Uh, what have they been doing? You know, they're, they're a little thing. Uh, one of the hypotheses that, they propo that I saw proposed in, in this book was that uh, plankton, the, that mesozooplankton clear, basically cleared up the water column which helped light get further down, and that uh, might have spurred on part of the camera explosion. Go ahead. Oh, uh, PC Myers has a, had posted another link uh, to a book called Autopod Biology and Evolution. Oh, here we go. Who is this one by? <laughs> PC Myers. Oh, uh, oh wait. Uh, editor. Minnelli. Minnelli. Boxel. Alessandro Boxel. Jeffrey Giuseppe. Fusco Giuseppe. Mm hmm. Well, thank you, PZ. I'll have to put all these links in the description. Okay. But it's like $166. I can't afford that right now. Yeah, geez, Louise, PZ. How, we're college <laughs> students. <laughs> we're probably buying textbooks. Yeah. Yeah, we can't... Woo, can't really get all these uh, 
<laughs> big college books. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a bunch of Europeans probably don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, a bunch of socialists over there. <laughs> Go to your library and recommend it. Hey, yeah, that's true. We could probably do that. Yeah. Um, I thought I understand much of anything. Oh, that's not true, guy. Um, uh, yeah, of course, you know, if you recommend videos, I can always do more videos in the future covering the evolution of, mm. of arthropods because they have very fascinating uh, evolutionary histories. Are you familiar with, like, the anomalocarids? Uh, maybe. Um, or, it's or like... Sorry. The which one? Oh, sorry, no, no one. Oh, there's like a whole bunch of of stem arthropods during the Cambrian, uh, okay. like Anomalocaris and Nariocaris and Opabinia. Okay. And oh yeah, Opabinia. That's that's this. Yes, that is that. <laughs> that's right there. Uh, and there's like Anomalocaris, which instead of having just one snout or one mouth part, it has these two mouth parts. Uh, and then there's like Nariocaris, which has a little segmented body. Um. And lots of things. And so it's... There, there are a whole bunch because they're just radiating. They're going all sorts of different directions. Mm -hmm. um, hey, you... Yeah, university libraries in particular love recommendations to useful academic texts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're talking about insect evolution or what? Yes, we yeah. are. Yeah, that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, but yeah, you can you know always recommend uh, a group of arthropods or something and I can do a video on the evolution of that because I'm actually doing I just got a recommendation from uh, someone and that video will be next so that'll be fun how does structuralism explain that radiating in all different directions well I'm sure they have an explanation for it uh, specifically I don't know <laughs> um, but regardless um is there, is there any other uh, things you want to point out or uh, notes you want to make? Yeah. Comments? Mm, I, think. Uh, I guess there's uh, another. I, I think it's a small comment, but uh, another comment about Starman Style. Uh, I think for, oh, I found. Okay. Um, on page 29, it says. Uh, okay, it's talking about the fossil Marella. M A R R E. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Morella. I'm familiar with that one. Okay, and it says uh, the creature is divided into 26 segments, each with a joint and leg for walking and a fairy gill branch for swimming. And I read from a small dog's retreat that it's supposed to be 17 to 26 segments, I think. So uh, not, not always 26. Mm -hmm. but, is uh, Morella, that's, um, is that one of the stem arthropods? Uh, I, I've heard I've heard of that one because that one's the one with like the little kind of tendrils on it, isn't it? See, well, could describe it. Okay, it says Walcott described it as a type of trial bite. Also, oh, it's also called the lace crab. Marilla. Okay. As an extinct arthropod known from the Middle Cambrian Burgess Shale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a weird little guy. Yeah, I remember him. I, I think PC is here today because you're talking about arthropods. Okay, uh, if PC ever wants to talk about arthropods, you, you can always talk to me. Yeah, of course, we can always have you on if you want. <laughs> oh, have PC on? Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, that is if, you, if he wants to come on. <laughs> Let's see, I'm trying to... Uh, 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 yeah, I like all these sources. This is some neat stuff. We have to look into it. I'll put it in the description so that people can check it out and be wowed by all this material. Um, Kakova Peck. Yeah, I've not heard of her. But that is neat. Yeah, um, I got stuff to read now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> That's the best part. Every time I have a, uh, do a hangout with RJ, he's like recommending stuff or we mention some topic and I'm like, oh crap, now I gotta go look this up. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a question uh, uh, from Nestleg20 Jackson Weeds. Are there any insect copper lights? Is there any uh, copper probably. lights? Probably. There are 
are probably lots of insect coprolites out there. Um, let's see, what is, there's, um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, any strata with insect coprolites, but there are, uh, there was a, what is it, the Green River Formation, they have found, was it the Cadis fly? I think they make little uh, holes in, <coughs> little homes in the mud. And these got preserved. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, which, the funny thing is, creationists try explaining the Green River Formation as, uh, you know, the flood as what caused it. But, at, but you can't really say that because you have all these really tiny, very fine structures made by arthropods and other critters which are getting preserved there as well and so yeah. oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was googling it it's those uh, insect insect coprolites have been found and preserved in amber well there you go <laughs> um yeah again oh man that's an, oh, i'll put that afterwards so scorpion evolution wasp evolution and mm -hmm. the amber uh amber fossils all of those I will put in the description mm -hmm. so you guys can can check those out. I might, I might look at it, I might look at it myself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, they're they are fascinating. Uh, it's fascinating that the there was one instance where there was a uh, I think it was a tick, and they've even figured out which group or which which uh, animal it was parasitizing. Because it was found with the hairs of it, and they identified the hairs as being uh, of this animal closely related to hedgehogs mm -hmm. and all all that stuff. So it's, yeah, fascinating stuff. Uh, they actually just found, if I remember correctly, an ammonite in amber, which is weird. Because mm -hmm. ammonites are sea critters. So why the heck is it getting preserved in amber? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, sheets of frass, though. Yeah, probably. Probably. Um, mm, oh, I know nothing. Yeah, we both know that's not true, PZ. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, the spiders with tails are in amber. Um, there's a group, the early... Well, actually, PZ did a video about that, too. Uh, yeah, there's this guy called a chimerachne, chimerachne, which is, it's like a spider with a tail, and because the earliest, the spiders are descended from this group of of basically spiders with tails and then that got shortened and now they no longer have it but uh yeah they're weird it's, it's ur aranea ur aranea i think is the what the group is called sadly no soft tissue preservation in the ammonite amber yeah but i mean still an ammonite and amber that's just weird uh i remember we found a a crab or we found a, a paper about a crab in amber for uh for the video i saw that video about the mosaic evolution of spiders yeah that was a neat video um our descendants of endoparasite the modern fleas are descendants of endoparasites i don't know anything about that have you heard about that Wait, it's interesting what? uh guy uh, fellow says i think i heard something about modern fleas are descendants of endoparasites maybe yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Looked like it had decayed into slime. <laughs> oh, gross. Um, yeah, lots of interesting things found in amber. There's like, uh, you know, lots of arthropods. Arthropods are probably the big amber guys, you know. Uh, I think eventually I want to buy some, I want to buy some, uh, like, in, like insects preserved on amber in, on like on eBay or something. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, of course, you know they were popularized because of a uh, was it Jurassic Park, the mosquito in amber. Mm -hmm. But oh well, at any rate, uh, so so uh, anything else? Any more questions from the audience? Anything that you would like to add? I, I like questions. Okay, we got any questions? Anybody? They seem to seems to have stopped at the moment. Unless that's just my internet, because my internet is crappy out here. Um. But anyways. Uh, 
So, what video? I don't know. Okay. Well, it seems like we're not getting questions really at the moment, but I get it's been about an hour, so I guess we can cut the hangout now. Sure. Okay. Well. Oh well. What about the trilobite oh. relationship with mandibulates? Uh. No, we didn't really talk about that. Uh, I don't really have an opinion on that. Do you? Uh, I'm not good with some of that. <laughs> yeah, I think they're arachnomorphs, if I remember correctly. Uh, like I said, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not very good with insect evolution right now. Well, if you ever have any questions, you know, you can uh, message me on Twitter or PZ or Nestle or whomever. Or me. Uh, yeah, there's lots of... <laughs> There's lots of, uh, you know, uh, interesting stuff out there. And if you ever want technical literature on on it, uh, I'm sure I can find stuff. Or you can find stuff. There's lots of stuff out there. That's what Google Scholar is for. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there was one research study that puts trilobites as sister to mandibulates. Usually aligned with, yeah. Uh, yeah, usually they're, they're, they're part of... They're part of the chelicerates, I think, aren't they? Are very closely related to them. At any rate, well, I want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for coming on, uh, Adriana. Thank you so much. It was thank good you. talking to you. Thank you, thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks, uh, everybody, for watching. And uh, we will see you next time. So bye, everybody.